Hey, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co, and today we're doing an unboxing and rambling for The Dead Keep from Simon Games. And yes, I think I am finally throwing in the towel on that one. I've been struggling and holding on, calling them come on, because, well, honestly, they've gone back and forth so often that I just stuck with whatever I got used to, and I find more people around me generally use, but I think I'm giving up and calling it Simon because, and here's the reason, because now that they've joined GameFound and I find myself using the name more often when I refer to GameFound, because I work for GameFound too, I've been trying to be mindful and say it correctly there. But that means I have to try to alternate when I say it the way they want, the way they officially call it, versus the way I do it. And honestly, that's just too much information to keep track of, so I think I will reluctantly throw in the towel. Now, a few things to get into as far as unboxing. First of all, uh, I have the coffee shot. I have a mostly empty cup of coffee. I have a knife that I will not need and will not be using because this is a prototype unboxing, which means the box is not in shrink, although although I think that the tiles, I think the tiles in the box are still in shrink, so I'll be able to come back to this knife later and go through that, so uh, this knife will see usage. As far as the mostly empty cup of coffee, that's because I've been fiddling around with the set over here for the past... Uh, I don't know, for the past bit, because this set, we'll, we'll talk more about this as we go through it, but I've been messing around with the lighting on this set, and uh, trying to get this set. I still have the other set, we'll talk more about that soon, but uh, effectively I've been trying to get the lighting here better, and things tweaked and adjusted. I'm still, I'm getting happier with it with each iteration, although I'm not yet completely thrilled, but let me show you what I did, the most recent things I've been fiddling around with. I've been, uh, I added the top light over here, I also added the backlight, those add a nice sense of depth, as well as lighting the background, but let me show you what that looks like if I go ahead and uh, tap these group control, I think I do, and then I hit off. There we go. You see, that's what it looks like there, and also, by the way, white shirt always throws off lighting on these cameras. The white shirt means that the camera's trying to match the shading. Different conversation. It'll look different when it's not white, but in the meantime, let's get those backlights back on because I think that that is much better as far as how that looks. But past that, we got everything on there, we got our light up there, and let's go back to this box because we have a few disclaimers to get to before we dive into things. First of all, everything in here is a prototype, including the various resin miniatures that uh, hopefully don't break as I casually treat this box as if, you know, it's not full of very delicate miniatures. And yes, I do have to ship the box off to someone else. Secondly, it's worth noting that Board Game Co. is doing sponsored content around this game. This video is not sponsored. Basically, uh, come on, Simon, Simon. Uh, Simon is sponsoring a gameplay that I'll be doing along with Professor Meg, possibly with AP2. AP likes the Zombicide series. We'll talk, we'll figure it out. Maybe AP will join. We'll see you with the gameplay. Either way, there'll be a sponsored gameplay. Uh, there'll be a preview done by Meg. And then uh, this is just me wanting to do an unboxing of it, not sponsored or anything, but I want to go through it because A, the miniatures are fantastic, and B, I think there's an interesting conversation around this game in general about, well, game design, what it is, because it's a weird game between the art styles, not in a bad way, between the art styles, the mishmash of art styles, between what the game we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it as we go through this. This is, of course, an unboxing and rambling, as evidenced by the fact that we're like four minutes into the video, and we haven't even gotten close to opening the box, which I guess, I guess we should do. Let's go ahead and start opening the box, and we'll talk about all the various things as we get through it, but let's go ahead and uh, line this up over here, and open up the Dead Keep. Now again, prototype, so uh, all the stuff you see here, this is uh, not what you can expect to see in your vacuum-packed box, and eventually it does show up. This is going to be on GameFound. It is a pre-order. I believe it's going live March 18th, if I'm not mistaken. I think I think it's going live March 18th, somewhere around then. But either way, I'll include links to all that stuff down below. And let's go ahead and put off all the things to the side, because I'm going to get into all the various things, the dice, the player boards, the cards, the tiles. I'll get into all the stuff as I can, and of course the miniatures. We'll do the miniatures last. I'll timestamp everything as much as I can. Let's go ahead and dive into this stuff. But anyways, oh, and the set. I'm not perfectly happy with the set just yet, I should say. I, there's still, I don't know. I have to figure out how to fix it or adjust it, but I've gotten lots of the lighting better. This is gonna have to, um, let's figure out what we wanna do here. We're gonna put this down like this. Give me a second. We're gonna dump this down down here and on the side, and then we'll put this down on top of the back of the box like so. Anyways, I think that works. I think that works. We'll come back to the miniatures last. But anyways, yeah, I think it's a little too dark up top, but I do have to film this when I'm not wearing a white shirt and see the difference as far as the, the I don't know, there's a word for it, but whatever, the difference between the uh, lighting, we'll see. And then I'll still try to mess with things. I always want to tweak things and improve them. Uh, this set is not going to be the main board game studio set in general. In fact, well, let's come back to all that. Let's start talking about well, the game. You see, the Dead Keep over here, and I don't have the rule book in here, I have a printed out rule book that is far less pretty, but basically the Dead Keep seems to be zombicide, but not. And I mean that in two ways. First of all, this won't come out over here. You know what? I don't want to rip that, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, 
over there because otherwise this will be bent more than I want. So there we go. We got this coming out over here. That's going to be our special abilities from the various monsters and or bosses you'll be fighting against in this game because this game is like 90% Zombicide. No, not 90%, that's not fair. It's 75% Zombicide. But the other 25% is very, very different. It is a scenario-driven game. It is not a campaign-driven game, so similar to the way if you played through Zombicide, you'll have a bunch of scenarios to go through. But also, the important thing and distinction, and we're going to use this knife. I'm using the knife already. I already used the knife. Anyways, uh, if you are someone who has played Zombicide, then most of the rules of this game are going to be very familiar and very easy to pick up. Uh, the way the item cards are, the way the zones are on the board, the way line of sight works, the way you take your turns and you take, I believe it's three actions, I think it's three actions per character, and then the enemy turns. There's going to be a lot of things that are very similar between your turn structure and the enemy turn structure and the general Zombicide universe. So if you've played Zombicide, this will feel very, very familiar. And yet it's different too. But if you if you do read the rulebook at any point, if you start going through this, I'd say about 75 to 80% of the rulebook feels like it's very much pulling from the Zombicide universe, but the other 25% makes it a very different game. That's the interesting part. It does make it a very different game. And the mishmash of art styles, I think we have a, we have Paul, is it Paul Bonner? I think it's Paul Bonner. Is it on the box? Is it on the box? Paul Bonner. Paul Bonner. And then we have uh, Raphael, Raphael Gitin, 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 Gitin. I believe that's who, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. But that's going to be, these tiles over here are going to be very much from a Zombicide style art. So his art style is very distinctive. It has a lot of the uh, Zombicide, a lot of the command game titles are going to have this art style. And they're very, it's, it's interesting just to see the disparity between the art styles in the game. So we have all these, I'll show you all these, but yeah, I mean, you're gonna have this standard, standard Zombicide kind of situation. So if you're familiar with Zombicide, so for example, if you have a character here, they can draw a line of sight into one room across, but you can't draw a line of sight through multiple rooms. Can I show you a situation where that's even relevant here? Yeah, so for example, over here on this tile, you can draw a line of sight from here into here, but you can't draw a line of sight into here because that's a full room away. Versus if you're on a street zone, you can draw a line of sight as far as you want uh, on, a, on an open street. These areas over here are going to be missed where you can get mana back. And mana, that's new to Zombicide. So this is this is not Zombicide. It's really not Zombicide, but it feels like it feels like the building off of the foundation of how Zombicide operates, and then trying to make it its own distinct beast at the same time, which I think kind of works. I think there's merit to it. Because on the one hand, as you're going through these rules, and I haven't played this game yet, so I can only talk about it from the standpoint of the rules itself. I can't talk about it from the standpoint, ooh, that's a mana fountain. So over here, you can replenish two mana. Over here, because it's a fountain, you can replenish five mana in a single action, and you can store up to 10 mana on your character. But I think it's I can only talk about this from the stance of reading through the rules and getting a, a how I think it's gonna play as opposed to how it actually plays because I haven't played it yet, although of course I will be doing so. I, I, I usually will be trying to do what I usually do when I have sponsored content. I probably will try not to have a review on this now. I'll have a review on the final game when it comes out down the road. But of course, if you ask me my opinions anywhere, I will happily give them because, well, I, it doesn't matter sponsored content or not. I am happy to give an opinion when asked for in any way, shape or form, whether on a live stream, whether in the comment section, but I try to avoid, uh, officially saying that, you know, what an opinion is on a full review video on the sponsored content. And I, when I say try to avoid, I mean exactly that. Like I do, I do sponsored, well, there are some times where I have done review videos and then gameplay videos at the same time for publishers. And there's a whole reason for that. We're not going to get heavily into that now, but I talk about it when it comes up and I always try to disclaim it as much as possible. So you're fully informed and aware of all the potential conflicts of interest. Now this over here, this is going to be, so you have an area of the board that's going to be elevated from the rest. So this area of the board, let's see if we can, uh, the top camera's not actually gonna show you that, but we can have an area over here. So I guess there's a specific stair tile somewhere, or maybe there's stairs on these. Is there stairs in here? There's stairs in here, let's show you this. So over here, we're gonna have this like so, so you can get a sense of how this feels right here. So you can see we have a different layered areas effectively. We have an elevated area that is not connected to these other areas here. Although, if you grab this tile over here, if I can pull it out over here, where is this? Then uh, this is gonna be the stairs tile that does provide that elevation. There's actually a few of them, so you can have different areas, you know, different, different tiles coming to it. But let's go ahead and put this more in the center over here so we can show this. And again, we have that board like so. We have an area elevation over here, and then we can go ahead and say, look, we have the stairs going up to that tile, and that's going to be the stairs up, so you can have that degree of ascension from one tile to the next. So it has a new elevated area. Again, this stuff is new to Zombicide. New to, because it's not Zombicide, it's not, but I'll show you other things. In other areas that's similar to Zombicide, we have green, red, and blue doors. We have green objectives, we have blue objectives, we have red objectives. Uh, we have, well, 
spawn points. We have spawn points and enemies are going to spawn similar to the way you're used to in the game. So there's going to be a lot of things that are very similar to the Zombicide system, but then there's a lot of things layered on top of it. There's monsters for, uh, thematically, by the way. I'm all over the place in this video, but it is what it is. These are unboxing and ramblings. I've warned you about that, that what they are, what they do. If you're new to the channel, that's what I always do on these there. They're a little all over the place. I'll talk about what I know, but I'll get into anything. But the Dead Keep thematically is this place that there's some rich sponsor who's basically hiring people to go into the Dead Keep and come out with whatever they find. Uh, ideally alive, because otherwise you can't come out with whatever you find. But hey, you know, it's your risk. You can do what you want. You can take those chances and figure that all out. But anyways, that's what's happening with the Dead Keep. It's a place of magic. It's a place of lots of miniatures we'll get to. We have our characters and our player boards. Again, this is going to be very, very zombicide familiar to those who are, you know, used to that system. We have our characters, so they're going to go down here. You have over here their basic starting blue action. You're going to have their level up action. So this little dial over here is going to move up the board as you go. That's going to give you your level one plus one action on your turn. Now you have four actions instead of three. Again, feeling familiar. When you get to orange, you can have one of these orange actions. When you get to red, you can have one of these red actions. And these are all going to be listed in the rule book. You have a list of actions at the end, so you can see what spellbook does. Ooh, spellbook lets you use uh, spells from your spellbook. I know that because that is an ability from Zombicide. They, they literally have, I mean, they have new ones, but they have lots of repeated abilities from the Zombicide system. Which again, the, the interesting thing about this is it means the game is easy to learn, for a very large amount of people who are already familiar with the Zombicide system. That's a good thing. Unless that good thing means you basically just have another Zombicide clone that's not even called Zombicide. Like, it's not the dead keep a Zombicide game. So, is this or is this not Zombicide? How close does it feel? How similar is it? Are they simply building off a foundation and a structure that's familiar, making the game an easier game system to learn and get up and rolling? Something I've always wanted to talk about, I haven't done a video on this, but I've been meaning to, is the nature of you have all these different types of rules out there. You have rules for what tiebreakers are. How do you divide points when people are tied? You have rules for line of sight. You have rules for first player. You have rules for, you know, when the game ends, do you all have one more turn? Do you immediately end? Does it go round? Another, do you finish the round, then one more turn? There's all these kind of edge cases of every game has different rules for certain things that are standard. Again, line of sight being a very common one, a good example, where you have so many different rules for how line of sight operates. Why not have some degree of standardization? Now, standardization does not mean have a single rule across the board because different systems need different rules. But why not have, I don't know, four line of sight rules that are fairly standard and people can adopt, you know, those standards. So they could be like, oh, line of sight is using the uh, Alpha Omega, Omega Protocol, which is a line of sight that you know from a lot of games. And that's that kind of concept of standardizing rule sets, but while giving you the flexibility to use what's right for you, I think could be a boon to well, learning games as opposed to they have as opposed to having to have seven thousand rules for line of sight, you'll have a lot of standards, and you could still be the special magical snowflake who wants to add your own edge case. But obviously, from a game design standpoint, you'd want to think: Am I adding value, or do one of the three or four standards fit my needs just fine? It's an interesting conversation because, to some extent, it can make lot rules simpler or uh, more accessible, but also could limit creativity. Because sometimes there's reasons to do things differently. Sometimes you want that twist to how drafting operates because it'll make your game stand out and be special. Although obviously you can still do so. The question is just when do you think you're when do you think breaking from a standard? When do you think breaking from a norm? This is an entire video conversation. I don't know why I'm getting this into now. Anyways, the point is. This is clearly built on the foundation that is homicide, but then it branches out from there. So you're gonna have your items over here, you're gonna have your body, your items, your gear, all those different things. Here's your body, here's your two hand weapons. You're gonna have your health over here, you're gonna have your, your, your little book over here. You have talismans that go up here. So for the most part, very similar to things you're used to while also being a little different because, well, it is a little different. To that end, do I only have four? I only have four of these. Am I only prepped for a four player game here? That's an interesting conversation because I believe, I believe the game is a one to six player game and I believe you could have up to six characters, but it doesn't look like I have six player boards. So uh, maybe they want me to play a four player game for right now. Anyways, we have a nut over here. As far as you know, the characters, we have nut, we have Mai Ling, we have Lothar, we have Theron, we have Arthur, and we have, well, nut again. So we have, what is it? Five characters. We have only five characters. So I definitely can't play we have five characters and four player boards. There's not going to be a six player game ha happening here. I'll tell you that much, although not that I planned on it, but I did. See, here's the tricky part. I was gonna invite AP to join, potentially, but if we do that, I mean, if you only have four characters, one person's controlling two, whereas if you have two, we each control two. If we had six, we'd each control three or each control two in a three player game. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we'll figure that stuff out. We have the cards over here. We're gonna get to the miniatures last because that's what we do. Anyways, 
while we get through the cards, you know, maybe I'll talk about I'll talk about the set while I do miniatures because frankly, uh, miniatures are usually the uh, least interesting part to talk about. I mean, they look cool, but they're the most fascinating part to see, but the least interesting part to talk about. We have cards over here, and again, this is going to be built off the standard uh, Zombicide infrastructure for the most part. I'm going to try to get these out over here, can, maintaining the order before I, I don't know. And I don't know exactly when the content's going to be going up for this game, I should tell you that right now, because speaking frankly, uh, between you and I, I know how to play the game, but I don't yet have a scenario. I have the rules, I know how to play, but I need a scenario to actually be able to play the game too, which means, uh, and then PAX East is this week, so uh, I'm going to PAX East, which means um, we'll see when we have content for you on the game, but we will have content for you on the game. Anyways, over here, we got, uh, we have, uh, these over here are going to be some, I guess, spells? Footman Striker, Telekinesis. Telekinesis is going to be a spell. This might be a talisman. Oh, these are talismans, okay. We have our items over here. Are these going to be your necromantic artifacts? So there's a whole bunch of different type of items you get in the game. Basically when mobs die, when the last unit of a mob dies, uh, that's when you're going to go ahead and drop a uh, place where you can search effectively. Versus when a monster dies, you'll go ahead and be able to get a necromantic artifact off the bat, I believe. So we have Forbidden Tomes over here. We have Legion. We have Master Elven Sword. This can be a 300 gold coin weapon. Why does the cost matter? Well, for starting purposes. For starting, starting resources, you have 150 gold to buy an item. Although I don't know why the 300 gold matters because well i don't know everything with the rules i guess why does it matter do you ever have the opportunity to buy things in game or is it just to literally make it so you can't buy that otherwise is 300 just the standard to say this is not a starting weapon or is there more t i feel there must be more to the game that i don't know why would that matter I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know. Like they don't, they don't have starting items and non-starting items. They have a cost on them and you can have 150 gold. I don't know why that is. Anyways, we have various items over here. So let's show you this Master Elven Sword. So Master Elven Sword is going to be a range one over here, a range zero, I mean, not range one. We have two dice. You hit on a three plus. It has the keyword lucky, which I believe lets you reroll maybe. I have to double check that one. And then we have a strength one. And basically the enemies have uh, armor protection and that's your armor penetration level. So kind of the same idea as the toughness aspect in the basic Zombicide. So weapons are gonna work very familiarly. Although again, we have these talismans, talismans over here that are a little different. So you are seeing similarities and differences even as I go through these over here. What else do we have? We have more of these. These are going to be your necromantic equipment. These are all, I haven't really gone through them heavily. I'm not going to go through them all. We have our uh, monsters over here. So we have monsters. These are going to be monsters spawning. That's a mob actually. No, that's um. Oh, that's the, the count. Counts are basically roaming spawn points. They're, they're going to spawn their own unit types. Oh, by the way, they have different unit types here. They have like six different basic units, I think. They have your standard, do they have tough guys? They have the standard walkers, effectively, which are basically 1-1 one, one regular grunt. They have horsemen that have two actions. They have hounds that have three actions for turn, which is great. This is like the wolves from Zombicide Black Plague. Uh, they have dead-eye walkers. They basically have dead-eye walkers, the ranged people. They have all that. And then they have crawlers, and I feel they have one more. Maybe the tough guys. The tough guys who are true strength. So they have your standard mobs. If you're familiar with Black Plague, this might be a game that will uh, give you that feel if you're going through it. I mean, that's what I think. So here we got our horsemen over here. So these guys have two actions per activation. That's going to be that horseman. We'll show you the actual creature so soon. We have mist burn. So we're going to have effects that relate to the mist that's on the board. What else do we have? I don't know. We have our street enemy over here. Oh, that's going to be an interesting element of the game. These cards, by the way, I'm realizing are not remotely sorted. I'm going to have to sort them all. They're a complete hodgepodge of a mess. They're upside down, right side out. I'm going to have to go through these all. But they have enemy, in addition to having enemy strengths, which again, if you're familiar with Zombicide, you'll spawn footmen. You'll spawn one, two, three, or three, depending on what level your highest character is in the game. But they also have different levels. So as you go through the game, you're spawning from levels one, two, three, four, five, which means there's an inherent timer on the game, not just your own own ability to maintain your lower levels in the game, there's an inherent timer that you're basically dealing with two levels. The level on, the, the, the fact that there's five different decks, level one, two, three, four, five, and then on each deck they get worse and worse the higher ramped your characters are, which is an interesting element. Again, this is built on the bones of Zombicide, it is not actually Zombicide. I'll keep emphasizing that. We have various gear and item and more stuff, I mean, these are just more cards. We got more piles of cards to go through over here. Let's go ahead and go through this. So we got this stuff over here. We got more upside down cards, more items. I'm not gonna, I don't feel the need to go through all this because, well, because I don't need feeling to go through all this, but you see we have a street enemy level three and then street enemy level two. Granted that one's upside down. We have mist burn and I don't wanna mess with this too much. The, the so mismatched all the place. So we got our undead horsemen spawning, one, two, three, four of those. With our stats, they're gonna have two, ooh, they have two strength, interesting, oh. Oh my gosh, that means 
that and oh and they have a different way the enemies also have a different way that they attack as well they can attack multiple times dealing multiple wounds that's a whole different problem but that's interesting the horsemen have two activations but they also are two strength and the shadow guards the shadow guards are basically like the uh, fatties effectively or roots they've changed the name multiple times anyways i think that's the main stuff you're going to see from me over here i have to go through this deck big time because it is literally a complete mess of disorganization but that means now we can go ahead and start getting to the miniatures which is part of the fun of an unboxing Rakuman game and Simon game and I will of course have a I will of course have a full unboxing of the all-in of this when it eventually does show up we can go through it all again and I mean because these are unboxing and ramblings only some of this is actually related to the game itself anyway and the rest is related to whatever is going on which means speaking of which we could talk about some of the uh, set stuff do I want to do let me just think of the order I want to do this in. I'm going to do this from lowest to highest, it looks like. So give me a second while I move these delightful foam pieces out of the way so I can grab these from the coolest to the least cool as we go through them. So we got this over here. Where do I have space for everything? Also my coffee. I'm still in my coffee, by the way. Anyways, let's go through this over here. Let's grab these things over here. Okay. Okay, let's show you some of these guys over here. And I'll show you as much as I can. Hmm, I have to zoom in as far as, you know what, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Nope, we gotta zoom in. Okay, let me just get there, there we go. Sorry, give me a second while it focuses. That way I can get, you know, better focus or detail on these guys. This is gonna be, I don't know, Shadow Guards maybe? I think they're the Shadow Guards. I'm not gonna show you all of these. We have a lot of mobs for the Shadow Guards. I'm gonna show you different types of enemies. We have these guys over here. You're gonna wow the focus is okay we need a there we no no there we go okay sorry about that one second that got very blurry very quickly there we go i think every time i pull it off it really takes a second to recenter which is a shame thing that that's gonna come out to the lighting issues that i still need to figure out because again you see it's gonna take a second each time i don't think there's enough for it to focus on to find a focal range Maybe if I put something in the background, hmm, give me a second to do this over here. If I grab this and put it down over here, that actually might give it enough of a focal point that it's not resetting every single time, for better or for worse. There we go. That's going to be uh, something. I don't know what these guys actually are, by the way, because I, I know they have different types. They have a bunch of different types, but I don't even know all the, all the things. We have the Dead Eye Walkers over here. That's effectively what these guys are. Oh, that was much better. Yeah, that was much better as far as maintaining that focal point the whole way through. So you can see this over here. Yeah, these are nice archers. I like having the little archers to deal with. So anyways, as far as the set, let's talk about the set over here. Although we got another archer. I'll show you the other archer first. They have like two archer sculpts? Two archer sculpts. We can go ahead and go to the next box shortly. But anyways, as far as the set, the basic idea over here is I'm actually going to be moving, uh, well, soon-ish. Not, not right away, but I'm going to be moving in the next several months. And to that end, I needed to figure out what I'm doing as far as sets. Because like I said already, this is not going to be the main board game co-set. You'll see this in infrequent videos. And the reason for that is because this set is not where I live. This set is actually in Professor Meg's studio, where I set up another temporary set so I have something to consistent to kind of fall back on while I deal with moving. So I'm going to be moving a few, bl few blocks away from where I currently live, but I'm going to be, uh, that's going to be in three or four months or so. And so you're going to be still seeing the old set for as much as possible, but I want something to be able to rely on as I transition to a new location. So let me go ahead and show you this over here. We got our, these people over here, but to that, oh, that's not good. That's bad. That's bad as far as that goes. But anyways, so the old set, the main set effectively, not the old set, the main set that you'll still see in the vast majority of videos, that effectively, where does it go? That's going to be around for as long as I can possibly manage, but I wanted to get set up with something, well, this actually killed two birds with one stone to a large degree. Because in general, whenever Meg does content for the channel, whenever Meg does a preview content for the channel, she has her own set and her own look for it. But whenever we do gameplays, I've always been torn about how and when I want to do gameplays in terms of what, where, where does effectively a sponsored gameplay go? That's kind of the question I need to navigate. Oh, I like these guys a lot. I like these guys a lot. These are solid sculpts as far as these guys go. Give me a second over here. Let's see. I like the, the miniatures. Let me move over there. I'm getting a little lost in the centering. But I like these. These are nice. These are nice. They got some nice detail to them. But anyways, yeah, so uh, figuring out where gameplays go in general is one problem. 
but then this gives me somewhere temporary to, to film things or whatnot as I transition. So effectively, you're gonna probably see, this is what you're probably gonna see on the channel. You're probably gonna see this in infrequent videos as I try to make sure this has a presence on the channel, but then at some point, you're gonna see it be more common for a short time, and then after that, it'll either be deconstructed totally, depending, it may get deconstructed totally, or it may be a backup set to have somewhere to do things that make it feel like a Board Game Co. video even then. So it's probably gonna go, you know, few videos here, a few videos here, a little spike, and then few videos once everything's resettled and in the new st new studio effectively. So that's something that you're gonna see over there on the, well, on the set, on the studio in general. But past that, but the tricky part is setting up lighting. Setting up lighting takes so much time or setting up a set, because there's aspects of this that I like. I kind of like the idea of having less of a full Calyx cubby. I want it to basically look different and feel different to a degree, but then you have to mess around with things. Like I first attempt had tons of games in the background, which I, I, lots of people said looked claustrophobic and I agree with, so I, I pulled that back. But then it's a lot of tweaking with lighting and trying to get things set up. And unfortunately, because this is not like because it's not set up with like a whole Alexa system the way I normally would for my own studio, my old studio, you've probably seen in some videos, but I'll do things like I'll be like, oh, Alexa, now recording. And everything goes on and off perfectly. Over here, not as well, not as well. Every single light has to be turned on manually, unfortunately, and turned off manually, which is much more of a pain, which again, which is why you'll see this is not going to be the default in general. It's gonna be the backup studio where I throw in a few videos here and there, but ultimately the main studio is still gonna be present, um, at least until that changes to the new, new studio, which will then become the main studio. There's a whole lot of new studio, main studio, and alternate studios that I'm throwing in here. But anyways, I'll show you some more of these guys over here. But yeah, a lot of it has been trying to gather, like part of it as well has been even just gathering games. Like so a bunch of the games behind me are actually from Meg's collection, but then I rounded it out with some that are mine so it feels like my set. I want it to feel like my set. Let's go ahead and put this down over here. No, that guy's, no, that guy goes there and that guy goes there. And I think we got, no, we got these pikemen over here. I haven't done the pikemen yet. Do you have anything else? No, that's the same sculpt. That is a different sculpt. Sorry, they're a little all over the place here. Then again, so am I, so, you know, pot, kettle, black, all that. Also, I realized I removed the uh, the tray that was kind of making sure the focal points were working great. Although it seems like the focal points are still working decently fine. The shadows, again, this is where the lighting's thing is. Like a little, it's a little darker than I'd like, not the game, the, uh, the lighting. Anyways, let's go ahead and go to the final tray over here, which the final tray is where you get the fun guys. The fun guys. Not the mushrooms, the fun guys. Let's go ahead and get some of these in play. So... We got another knight. Is that another knight? There's three sculpts for knights? Yeah, I think so. This doesn't feel like it's a baddie. There are three different sculpts. There's six knights, three different sculpts. I only showed you two of them. This is going to be the other one. And again, the sculpting is fantastic on these. I hope this holds up for the final copy of the game. I hope it's something that continues to be like, look at this. Eh, there we go. Like, I hope this holds up well for the final copy. This is where, like, the shadows actually do have a nice kind of look to it as far as... I mean, I think they do as far as the camera work and whatnot. Then we have these mobile spawn points. Why do I only have three? There should be four. There should be a fourth mobile spawn point. Uh-oh. Did I miss it? Is it somewhere else? Oh, we have this guy over here. I didn't even show you this. this is this a crawler? Did I forget to show you the crawlers? Did I just miss them? So I think this is a crawler over here. There's a concept where you have these mobile, you have these mobile um, search zones, basically, that when the last member of a mob dies, but then you can sometimes pull a crawler, and then that both gets rid of the search zone, and gives you something you need to deal with. Anyways, I feel like I'm missing a miniature. Unless it's down here? No, I don't know. I don't know exactly. We have our five heroes, we have that. Maybe they just didn't give it to us right now? It's in the rules. But basically there's four different mobile spawn points. That's these guys. These guys, I don't know how well they'll show up on camera, but basically we got this over here. That's gonna be a mobile spawn point that basically spawns its own type of unit. Uh, this one's gonna be for the archers, I believe. I don't know her name. She has a name. She has a name. But there we go. We got this over here. And then we got this guy over here. That's going to be this guy. There we go. So these guys are going to spawn their own baddies. Again, there should be a fourth one. Or is the fourth one for these horsemen? I don't know. Or is there a wolf one? Again, I don't know. I should. I, there should be something here. Then we have our heroes. I'll show you the various, various heroes. These actually are less cool than some of the other guys, but honestly, if you ever got Black Plague, Paul Bonner has his own guest pack, I believe if I recall correctly, and that's gonna be, let's see, there we go. Light, light's better than that one. But Paul Bonner has his own guest pack, and these this very much feels like that guest pack, which means you'll also have people clamoring for like a, uh, 
Black Plague Dead Keep crossover, which I don't know. I used to be one of those people that wanted stuff like that, but then I found that I didn't use stuff like that, so I stopped clamoring for stuff like that. I have it. I own those things. I have I have a lot of these crossover kits for different games, and I I just find I don't use them. At the end of the day, I, I intend to use them, but I just practically speaking don't use them because I, I I have so many miniatures and things for these games to begin with that getting an extra guest pack isn't necessary. It just means that I have to go into a different game and grab, ooh, look at the doggo, look at the doggo. You have to go into a different game and grab an entirely different, you know, character just so I can play with a bunch of other characters that I already have too many to begin with. Now, granted, everyone's going to have their own different ways they approach games, and everyone's going to have their own different uh, collection size. For me, this is very much a privileged position to be in where I have so many characters for Zombicide that I don't need to go into another game. For somebody else, they're trying to make their their gaming dollar go as far as it possibly can. And so the idea of being able to have a crossover pack from Black Plague to Zombicide does actually give you things that you can do. Oh, these guys are the, um, the, the like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, but that's not what they're called. They have, like, they have a thing in the rules, but ooh, that's actually showing up nicely. Oh, interesting. Usually red does not show up well on camera, although I wonder if that's a lighting thing. Maybe I just have, maybe the lighting here is dark enough that it's actually showing up well. Or maybe it's prototype red and not final copy red, and maybe that's the difference. Or are these the trolls? There's a bunch of monsters. They're very much Paul Bonner style art as far as the monsters go. Again, like, look at these. These are classic trolls. If you've played Trudbang, which is basically all Paul Bonner, if I'm not mistaken. And again, he has lots of guest packs elsewhere. They got some solid. Again, these are all prototypes, so your final, your final version of the game is going to be different. It should ideally have the same sculpting, but the quality might be better and or worse, depending, because... Again, prototype. This is not the uh, this is not the final copy of the game over here, but they are nice. Although it is getting fluff all over the table, which is that's going to be its own problem to deal with. Anyways, we got this guy over here with his own. Uh, I don't know what is that. Is that a pig? He's not. A, he's not a pig. He's not a legitimate pig over here. That's amazing. Look at that. Then we got this guy, the miniature over here, who again the detailing is excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and put these back over here. Get in there, and we saved one last thing for you. We have this little dragon over here. This little cute dragon, which, again, Trudvang had this giant dragon, which I never... Trudvang's late. Like, Trudvang Legends from, from Simon, like, that's been a long time coming. I, I got rid of my copy. I thought it was a good game. I enjoyed it. But it, to me, it wasn't a great game, and I have too many I have too many games in that genre that ask a lot from me that are, at least for me, better. Trudvang felt a little bit repetitive in the way things were. But either way... That's what we have over here. I am not going to try to rebox this on camera right now. This is again prototype. It's a bit of a mess, but I, I think this is an interesting. I think it's an interesting situation. Just the the way the game is. The fact that it's basically built off of the bones of Zombicide, but it's also very different at the same time. I am looking forward to tabling this as soon as I get an actual scenario I can play. I'm looking forward to tabling this. Uh, I want to see how it tables. I want to see how it plays. There's a whole different fa facet of, you have mobs, which are basically the zombies, but then you have monsters, which are kind of abominations, but they operate differently than abominations typically do. There's a new loot system. There's a new enemy attack system. There's an elevated terrain system. There's all this mist and mana and all these things that can empower attacks as weapons that can be empowered by mana. And so it's an interesting system that it builds off a foundation that I know I like. The only question is, what's the final game like? Is it a system that I know I like, or is it a system that... I'd rather play Zombicide. But ultimately, we'll find out. We'll find out, because I hope to be tabling this one soon. Uh, in any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing of a prototype Dead Keep, the Dead Keep from Simon Games. Launching on GameFound March 18th-ish or something like that. I assume there'll be pre-order bonuses. Generally, when Simon does their uh, campaigns, their pre-orders or whatnot, they usually have a pre-order bonus, even though it's not as exciting as a full-on crowdfunding campaign. They usually do have their pre-order bonuses, and I assume that something will be there. Maybe the pre-order bonus will be the crossover pack. That would be, that's actually not a bad pre-order bonus. I should probably go look at the page and see what they're, see what they're doing. But in the meantime, I'll link to that, that I'll link to that down below. And also, if you missed it, uh, they also went ahead and they uh, put up the, proto the the preview page for God of War 2, which that, if you're interested in that, I, I mean, it's a one to two player game, which is interesting. I don't know if Simon has ever done a one to two player game. In fact, it kind of reminds me of a bit of Ice of Iron Guard. If Ice of Iron Guard is a one to two player game, it's, I mean, there are other games too. I'm just thinking of big box experiences. But that's a whole different conversation for a whole different day. I hope I cover that one. Ooh, I hope I get access to that one. Anyways, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.